very good day to all our viewers. My name is Zinat Islam and I'm the Relations Manager Academia Network at UNICENTER. Welcome to Lecture 5 of the YSBC Web Lecture Series. The topic for today's conversation is why and how corporates get involved with social business. Our speaker today is Mr. Hans Wright, who is the co-founder and managing director of Grameen Creative Lab. Our moderator today is Mr. Ne Leonard Nima, who is the founder of Studio Nima. Mr. Leonard Nima has incubated, grown, advised, and consulted social businesses around the globe, working in various fields, including plastic waste, circular economy, fair fashion, sustainable mobility, and many more. Mr. Hans writes, incubates social businesses all over the globe. As a purpose contributor, visionary, and social entrepreneur, Hans is creating the change he longs to see, campaigning for social inclusion. So today's discussion is going to be a great conversation. And now I kindly request Professor Muhammad Yunus to kickstart our session today. Professor Yunus. Thank you, Jeanette. Wonderful to be with you again. This is our fifth lecture in the series and a very interesting topic, very attractive uh, issue. Uh, this is the why and how corporates can get involved get involved with social business. So this is a topic everybody is curious to know more about it. And uh, who is the best person to enlighten us on this subject than uh, Hans? Hans has been uh, working with the top uh, uh, corporates in uh, Germany. And uh, he, has, he has been a creative advisor to uh, at least a dozen top companies in uh, Germany. So he knows corporates world very well. And uh, he himself became a connecting point for social business for many companies in Germany. But the social uh, the corporates, uh, read, other than Germany, also get uh, involved uh, in uh, France, for example. Uh, the very classic case that we all, always talk about is Danone. Uh, this is, they got involved with social business. And uh, Veolia, they got involved, seriously involved in social, social business. And we have Credit Agricole, that's another one. So there are several uh, French companies besides the German companies. Then you have the Japanese companies, Uniqlo, Yuglena, and many others. And Indian company like Tata, uh, Canadian company like McCain. So we have lots of connection and lots of serious work uh, done in social business through um, corporate bodies. People can't, can't figure out why uh, corporates should be interested in social business or in, in case of why anybody should be interested in social business. So they immediately think maybe NGOs will be doing the social business. Maybe some philanthropic persons will do the social business. But seeing the diversity in, in the world of uh, corporates, that's a very interesting subject that uh, we, we usually don't think about uh, how it happens. So today, Hans will be explaining that. And uh, this is something that uh, everybody is eager to know, want to know how many more are coming. And he knows the ins and outs of the corporate world and the social business world. Uh, he is a good connector between the, these two worlds. So we invite him to talk. And uh, Leo has been very active with us uh, on social business. And he has been our uh, um, MC for many of our conferences, Master of Ceremony for many of our global conferences. So today, uh, both of them will be talking about uh, this uh, subject, uh, apparently. Um, complicated subject that I hope this will be a very interesting subject for everybody to hear. So I'll let you uh, proceed and uh, Leo, please take it over. Now this will be your chat, Leo and uh, Hans. Please continue. Everybody's waiting to hear your talk. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Yunus. Great pleasure yes. to be here today with all of you. Normally, as you said, we meet on big stages where I have the pleasure to introduce you. This time you introduced me. I'm getting used to this, so let's do it on the next occasion as well. And you already gave a very good introduction to Hans. Maybe on the personal note, first for all of you out there, Professor Yunus and Hans and myself, we've been working together for more than 10 years now. So in 2009, I met uh, Hans in Germany. And in 2010, Professor Yunus, this is where we met the first time in Japan, where we actually initiated one of these corporate social business initiatives. So that was a starting point for one of them, you mentioned them. So today with Hans, gonna to talk about why and how corporates get involved into social business. It's a big topic. So Hans, very happy to have you with us today. And 
yeah, want to see you here on our little stage. Hans, are you with me? Hi, Hans. Perfect. So let's get hey, started. Leon. Good to have you with us in the lecture series. You got a good introduction by Professor Yunus already. You are working in the field with corporates for more than 20 years. So long track record. You know how corporates work. And this is something that we want to talk about today. So how do they work in the social business world? And when we had our initial conversations, we figured out there are three different ways and maybe even more how corporates get involved. They create social businesses. This is kind of number one. And we have a few good examples. Maybe number two is they provide human resources. So all the smart people out there, we need more smart people for social businesses, doing social business. And maybe the third one we want to talk about today is how can they partner with social businesses? For example, in the field of procurement, think about the massive opportunities where we can use company power to procure from social businesses and make social businesses stronger. So this is where I would like to start with you, Hans, when we talk about creating social businesses. What are the reasons why companies get involved and got also involved in social business? Uh, mainly the main reason, as I accepted, was in the beginning in 2008 when I meet Professor Yunus and to be precisely, I'm working now and serving uh, corporate since 1994. So that's over uh, nearly 26 years, so a little bit more. And uh, the first time is there was curious. They want to do something. They want to keep the license to operate. You know, when Professor Yunus becomes on the big screen. It was always on screen somehow, but the social business movement was big on screen, of course, with the enormous accelerator of the Peace Nobel Prize. Why a professor of economic becomes the Peace Nobel Prize? The first man and his mankind to get this most um, uh, impactful award as an economist. So everybody is was curious, want to learn, want to see, want to not missing the chance. That the curiosity was the main reason, not because of being really more social conscious or want to do an impact. In principle, don't miss an opportunity. Secondly, by uh, in the beginning of the last uh, uh, decades, in the, in the zero years, you have to see in the 90s, we had an enormous uh, uh, movement of uh, international transparency. There's a lot of bad apples in the corporate world really had to give up the, the business and uh, the international law of corruption was done by 1999 so by 2004 2005 2006 the most of the big corporation took it serious you will lose the license to operate if you not behave in benefit to the society so it was more a principal status quo, how I don't lose the license of, 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 of operation. And secondly, oh my God, there's something new out. I don't have to miss it. And the new, who was already 40 years old, was Professor Yunus, the Grameen Bank, and a fantastic story about social conscience-driven businesses. Yeah, and now I think we have a few years of experience with working together with corporates. So what really then, besides curiosity, made them come into social business? And I think there's many different reasons. Um, and hopefully greenwashing shouldn't be one of them, but what are other, other reasons why companies really got involved over the last 10 years? People working in the corporation, people who have an open mind, people who look for a, who look for a personal purpose. People say, oh, I'm working at BSF, I'm working at Bosch. I want to be a good person. I want to be belong to the solutions and not be part of the problems. So it was people. It was always starts with people, it goes to people, and it was the people's interest and not the corporate interest. The corporate interest is very easy structured at these times, um, and uh, they have a clear roles and responsibility. The tasks are clear, the strategy is clear. So it was in the beginning, it was very much individual people, also like you, Leo, or many others. Oh, there's something new, there's something different. There's a, maybe a hope, there's maybe even something who not only helped me in the poorest of the poorest, maybe it helps me on the street next door. Maybe it helps me around uh, my own uh, city. Maybe it helps me in my own district. Maybe it helps me in my own nation. Maybe it helps me in Europe. So it was people. People as a starting point. So then some of the corporates took up this people initiative, let's call it and started social businesses because you said it before maybe in the interest of a corporate is not social business per se but they have a profit maximizing in, uh, interest so do you also see there a dilemma with corporates so they have the for-profit incentive and then comes the social business 
mindset into the company? Is that some sort of dilemma or how does this go hand in hand? No, no, it's a big uh, a dilemma, even a paradox, an enormous paradox. And because the greatest people like the CEO of Danone or also Mr. Hambrecht at the very beginning, everybody when he listened to the concept of social business, it was clear it's an easy, very cool way how to solve our problems. So it was not a big a mysterium. You don't have to know a, a big skills. You know, it's easy. Everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. But the paradox was in what I should do. What's my role and responsibility as a top management? What's the role of my company? So it needs an enormous change inside uh, the, the, the corporate culture structure and inside of the way what is allowed and what is not allowed. What are the roles given by the ownership, given by the stakeholder, to say to the management what you have to do. So, first of all, I was very thankful to Professor Yunus and he was not in the beginning a totally excluding the corporations, you know, because it was, of course, there was many um, companies where we should be not in touch because their behavior was an enormous strategy for the humankind and they are more or less uh, a creator of the misery where we are in. We know it. Uh, that's a clear aspect. We only have to see it on the climate engineering, if we see it on the plastic, if we see it on, on, on heroin as a product in the world. We saw that the corporate world with her massive power is a creator of problems, an enormous creator of problems in food industry, in material science, in pollution, in many things. So we did a lot of excuses in the last 50 years or 70 years or 100 years even under the name of making money, money to make a harming our nature, our rivers, our beaches, our, our lakes, our air. So I was very thankful in the beginning then Professor Yunus said, no, don't exclude it. But in the same way, for all of us who run new and it's be careful to don't run them behind blindly. There are one player as many other players and um, of course, we still don't work for companies who are selling sugar in the water and use all the sweet water aspects um, in a way in one nation where the sweet water is used for, it's needed for many other things. So we are still thinking one of the other companies, sorry, as long as you behave to be a maximum driver, for example, for diabetic, why you should spend your money to fight against diabetic if you still make your product who is so highly sugared, then it creates a, a diabetic. So there's a huge paradox behind our aims in the social business movement and the big corporations. Yeah, and the paradox you mentioned it between the simplicity on the one hand side, but then still it's very tricky to implement this. And maybe there's this paradox and the twofold approach. On the one hand, we want the social business to create impact within the corporate, but we also maybe want them to transform the corporate in the long run, because this is, as you said, this is where the problem is. We don't need that small fixing social business, but the transformational power of the social business for the entire corporation. I mean, this would be the perfect one. Maybe we talk a little bit about some of the examples. So Professor Yunus mentioned it, you've been working with corporates now for many, many years, and uh, there's a lot of experiences that you have made in the good and the bad. Uh, so what are good examples out there that where social business works in the corporate world? In that, in that the corporate world, uh, Leo, what we talked about before, the best thing is the people again. So the best thing is what the corporate people give us so far was a high spirit, like a top manager, a CEO of Avon, uh, a board member of Apple and Mercedes, like Andrea Young. And she turned her whole expertise from a top management to catch a dollar lady as a CEO of Grameen America. Mm -hmm. With all her heart, with all the experience, with all the commitment, with all the way of being a trained manager, she comes in the game and changed the game. So I totally believe this was the best thing is what corporate world did for us so far to change people, to change the riverside. Secondly, we all know uh, the big heart about Danone. We know uh, Frank Ribery and Emmanuel Faber and Emmanuel Machon and all the uh, highly inspiring French uh, friends of us. And they have tried very hard inside Danone to make this transition happen. And it's not an easy transition because it's still working on the paradox. And uh, this paradox keeps us working in a big way. 
So the good examples, let's say it like this, the best examples what we have so far is the unbelievable good friendship and personal relation between many, 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 many great French people in the Danone community with our friendship, with our Wushdi, with our way as we work together. We are all, as you know, and we, are, we teach by Grameen Bank and Grameen uh, family, we all have somehow a relation and we work as a humans uh, and not only as a manager. And we got a lot of uh, good connections to Danone and they are working very hard to make one precise example. A second one, where I'm very happy about it, who did quite well and quite good, is PNP Paribas, European largest bank. We was completely for years when uh, Claudia Belli asked us and the one young girl, hey, Professor Yunus, what do Professor Yunus say? Hans, this is a bank, we have no chance. And we, it was really clear, we only want to make social business. And then we talked a lot with Claudia and we talked a lot with Professor Yunus. And then something comes out like climate change or many independent social business. And I think with PMP Paribas, we did great examples. We did a lot of great tries, like in Adidas or in BSF or in other brands, but it was a, still an experimental pass. Uh, it not went into the core of the business. With PMP Paribas, we all have uh, a clear uh, path how a corporate can work. And maybe I, I would like to start with the first example. I mean, Danone and Grameen Danone is one of the social businesses that is over and over cited again. And Emmanuel Faber will also be part of the lecture series. So uh, you will all see him soon coming up. Um, but one thing that is interesting, I mean, that's why so many people talk about this because they are out there for quite some time. So there's a lot of experience. And when we talk about reasons why corporates get involved, I remember my first trip to Bangladesh, 2010 in Bogra, we visited the and the chief engineer, he was there and he said, for us, this is a huge innovation driver. They, they are used to building big, big factories, but in Bangladesh, it was the smallest they have ever built in remote rural areas. So for them, it was also a lot about innovation and learning experience. So this could be one reason. And Danone, also one other reason maybe to mention, and you can share your experience there as well, it is positive impact on employer branding in the end. I mean, people have a stronger identification if the company is doing something good. Well, what do you think about this? And basically, I can't tell about all the figures uh, worldwide, but I can explain you very much the figures in Germany about the big corporations. We saw suddenly a dramatic shift of the people, and it starts again with people, who say, my wish, when I'm finished my master, when I'm finishing my, my PhD, when I'm finishing my education, I want to work for something with a purpose. So the GIZ becomes suddenly the most vicious new uh, 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 job giver in front of Porsche, in front of BMW, in front of Volkswagen, because people want to be a solution. So the interest comes again on the interest rate because we had something what they call awfully a war of talents, where we are in the middle in those before the uh, before the, the, the corona uh, 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 virus uh, catch us in the dramatic way as it did in the last uh, the six, seven months. But still on the coding, on the technology side, we have a war of talents. Mainly it is to get your own aims done. I'm very conscious about that we have a lot of benefit in that the corporations to make the cooperation successful as corporations are. If you want to do social business, we have to see, to be very clear, it has to be as soon as possible, as quick as possible, independent of the management and independent of the cooperation to be an independent company. Otherwise, you know, we have the same uh, instinct like this Mittal Asilwa, you know, when we went to South Africa, we saw housing is an enormous problem. We created houses for 1,500 uh, euros as a shelter. They saw it a big business and they brought it in the normal business bank. Mm -hmm. So if you want to really make social business defined and inspired by the great uh, 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 Grameen family, inspired by Professor Yunus, then you have to make it very clear from the very beginning, 100% independent. And that's honestly, it's not so easy because you need a full trust and somehow the big corporations still have all this interest, oh, what I'm learning here, what I'm doing here, I can use it for my benefit. And that's not the way 
as I got teach, at least my professor Yunus, is have to be independent, like climate change. They're working 12 people now. They're completely independent business model. They don't need PMB Parifar anymore. They don't need Grameen anymore. It's an independent business who can grow by its own. 100% designed, lived, and performed by the seven principles. So the corporate interest and the power is good as a partner on the same level, but not as a man where we run behind and say, we need you or they need us. If they would need us, they would be already lost. Yeah, absolutely. If we would need them, we already lost. So very clear, they are doing their job. We highly respect the people in these corporations and we share our knowledge and see what we can inspire them. Yeah, absolutely. And when we talk about all the experiences, and here's also a lot of questions coming up, and this would have been my next question, but also a question from Morgina. What challenges do corporates face? And are these different from small enterprises in social businesses? So what are the main challenges for corporates out there when they want to do social business? The roles of the board members and the roles of the new board members, especially the new board member is the most critical role. If I have a commitment board member, like M or like Frank before or like anybody else or like the first Telenor guy who worked together with Professor Yunus on this super story about Grameen Phone. The second and the next board member was the biggest problem because he changed the game again. He didn't remember, oh, it was done selflessness. Oh, sorry. Now I see a huge opportunity. So my appetite about making my profit becomes very, very bold. So the biggest challenge is the next one. The, of course, the first challenge is the first one. So you need a grassroots, you need people inside the company, you need customer and, and other interest influencer from outside to press it, that's here. Then you need the board decision, they have to walk and to talk, they have to make it clear. And then it's a very, very tricky aspect to say, oh, not falling back in the old behavior to say, oh, that's very interesting for me. This could make me a better market entrance. This could make me a better image. This could make me really solving a problem that I may can't solve alone. And then we come on the clear uh, aspects to see the institutions, what we want to found on social business, should be pure, selfless, and should be pure, pure all the, on the way. It's social conscience driven. And uh, that's not easy. It sounds so easy. But to make yourself something to start inside Adidas, for example, and not having always Adidas come back, oh, now we can use it, now we can use it, now we use it for pearl shoes, we have plastic recycling stuff. It's beautiful. I love Adidas. It's a great company, but it's not a social business company. And if we want to learn how to create social business, how we make an independent form to say once maybe we have 10 or 15 percent of our market done as, as a social business, Then the corporate can be our sparring partner. We can have the best inspired people. And we can meet on the same level to talk on the same level. We are not less than them or we are not a second class citizen. We are first class citizen in, um, in a way. Sorry, I was in the house. We were first class citizen in a way to say we are part of the business community with our behavior and our values. But there's also, I like the paradox that is following us throughout the lecture today. There's also the paradox because you said it starts with people, but then it also needs to be independent of people. It needs to be more systemic, right? So we need to have that kind of systemic change. How do we make that then happen? But that's the beautiness to work together with, the, with our friends in Bangladesh. We are only be teachable by examples. They created an example. We have also examples in Japan and in Germany. Mr. Raiffeisen was a super example, you know, or the people who started saving banks 200 years ago. In the beginning, there was, if you read, if you read the, um, the founding documents the, uh, of these companies, it was very clear, uh, this, this is what we have in the social business way. What we do have, we have a clear way how to explain it, how to shape it. Let's say we have something like a social code, thanks to the Grameen family, And we can replicate it. It's a little bit like we had, if we want to serve pizza, we have the Italians, we can talk to the Italians, they know how to do it, they love it, they make it. God thanks, we have the, we have the Italian pizza maker, otherwise the pizza will all taste like uh, some lousy pizza taste what we have all around the world. So the original is so important. 
And this is where I'm very thankful in my life that I could work 12 years now together with original thinking. As more original thinking we have, as easier is the guidelines. And here we could actually do a quick poll, who loves original pizza? But we're not doing this, Hans, we're coming to topic number two. <laughs> Because I know the answer, everybody loves good pizza. Uh, Professor Jonas as well, I see him smiling there. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But Hans, maybe topic two, and we briefly talked about this already, how corporates can get involved to really provide talent, like business professionals, top people. You mentioned Andrea Jung from Green America. What, how does it actually work? How can we benefit from this enormous human resource pool? Yeah, no, that's very important. Yeah, that's the same for us. Work on the same level, respect the people. You know, the corporate people are also, they're the mirror of our society. If you see in a, in a company like Volkswagen with 640,000 employees, this is somehow a mirror of the society. There are many good people. Here. There are many grateful people. There are many uh, parentship in mothers, fathers, family holders. They all want to be part of the society and we should respect them in the beginning to say, we can meet each other on the same level. So Volkswagen now is hard uh, uh, working in the last 12 years to bring social business as a benefit for her culture, as a benefit for a way of contribution. They also love uh, the idea of social business, so they want to do it. Under the pressure of the monthly market, under the pressure on the observing of the stock market, under the pressure of the regulation, under the pressure of competition, they are not always have a 100% focus on the social aspects. And that's, again... It's a very beautiful way to have an independent social business movement because we always will be focused on social business. So there will be focus on many different aspects. So what we can do is uh, meet, talk, exchange. Many of, uh, one of the ideas, what, what we always have, many of the things what the big corporations are not doing, that don't do it because it's less than 9% of return of capital invest or 10% or 15% less. So if you have less than 10%, the appetite of the decision-making and the management is very small. But they would have beautiful patents, beautiful solutions, who makes maybe three or four percent return of capital invest, or maybe two percent. As long as it makes a big benefit to the people, we should use it. We should say, give me the idea, give me the patent, and we shake it. And that's, I think, where we have a lot of different stuff. A lot of things who is a value inside the corporate, but it's not a value for the corporate. Give it to us. Um, maybe a special uh, way how to produce something, maybe, and of course, always people as an exchange and as a volunteer and as a management. So I, the, these are the, the best things on the corporate to respect each other, to accept each other, and then work together. But have a zero, zero, zero tolerance if one of the business is disturbing. You know, imagine Professor Yunus and we be fighting a lot of... of against uh, uh, youth emplo uh, employment and against uh, the uh, drug uh, mis misuse. So how we would work together with a spiritual uh, 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 creator or with a, a factory of, of, of alcohol or cigarettes, and in the same way, uh, we try to have a better life. This paradox, we want to not play. There is no chance. There is just a tolerance. And if you see it, for example, working for, uh, for, let's say, let's pronounce it like Coca-Cola, when you create, when you have the creator, that's what I mentioned before, on the diabetic, then we fight against the epidemic epidemic about diabetes. But the best fight is stop producing your product. And there will be always remain a conflict, but that means you, they have the license to operate, we can't do about it, but then we focus on our on our uh, compassion and mindfulness to say, we want to help every single person who suffer about diabetic. And that means a different way of life. That means caring, uh, that means a generica in pharmacy. And that means a lot where we can do this. So there's also a clear way where we say, sorry, don't waste our time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste our time. Let's focus and be successful. Yeah, of course, it has to match for sure. The, the social business idea with the corporate idea has to match and not be against each other. And one thing that you said before, um, some of the ideas you can realize in the social business that you probably cannot realize in the corporate because of return expectations. I think that's also interesting to say, maybe some of the areas you need to take out of the corporate world in order to make sure that they work. 
for this, we need the people then. How can we get the people involved? How can we get corporate people involved? Do they need to start their own social businesses? Do we have enough, let's say, employment opportunities, career opportunities? Is that something where we're also a little bit short in the social business world? No, I think that's why we have this beautiful, you know, social business center network in the universities, you know. Normally, as a doctor, as a medicine doctor, you know, you go every two years to your alma mater and you get educated about the next level of the medicine doctor. If you see now social business contributors, if I see now environment business management or chemistries or others, we have to learn the same way we coming back every two years independently of our lesson learned in the business to come from the praxis to the theory, praxis to the theory, but as well learn from the and on new theory to see what it works and what it not works. So a long life learning system together with the UNO you know, social business centers, together with the management education on social science is a very important aspect. Independent knowledge, not knowledge that's only, a com it's only inside a Samsung or an Apple or any bold brand in the world. Independent knowledge for a long life education together with us. And mainly see the dramatic and the situation where we're in. We all who listen today and you, Leo and Meisert, we know, our time is very short. We all know what uh, uh, Fridays for Future told us in the last uh, one month. We all know it since more than 25 years. Then we have a limited and always more limited time resources. And this makes it really urgent. And the sense of urgency is very bold. And that's where we have to call for actions and don't make gambling between corporates and not corporates really using to solve the problems. And in this way, on this radical, uh, on the, even from radical to the brutal reality, what we are in is social business a solution and a, and a, and a beautiful one. And uh, we, have, we have just to do it. And the corporate sometimes, you know, I just talked today morning with Thorsten Weiber. If we look to Africa and if we see, we're expecting around 100 million mini electric grid in Africa. If we left it now and say Green Tech Africa from Thorsten goes together with the big corporations, it would be the same if Professor Yunus didn't go for his own entrepreneurship. So I believe if we concentrate of our own social business, then we have soon more billion dollar turnaround companies who are 100% pure. And maybe in the next five years, we both can observe our dream comes true. It's the first billion dollar companies listed on the stock market. There's no dividend, there's no speculation in the game. We created a role model on the billion dollar game. And that's where we have to go. So that's our call to action, Hans, right? So in the normal tech world, you would call them unicorns. I know in the impact field, you call them zebras. So let's go for the $1 billion zebras as a social business. Absolutely. I think this is a call to action. Professor Yunus, more work for us here from Hans. I think that's great. Um, there's also different ways. And here's one comment from, from Deepesh. I'll just uh, put this in because it's really uh, interesting. Some insights from Grameen Danone. He says, here in Grameen Danone, we have great privilege to have excellent talents supporting us as mentors, coaches, technical experts from global Danone and Danone communities. So we can. this could also be a different way to bring in corporates. So they can create their own social businesses, either outside of the corporate world, within the corporate world, or we really use their talent and their capabilities for other social businesses. Is that something that you also see out there happening over the course of the last years? Yeah, but, but then it's again people to people yeah. and people to people. That's what I mentioned in the beginning. The corporate in himself, I just can talk about the tax companies and the European stock companies. By law and by existing law, from the capital law, is nearly in a highly conflict zone with our way to do social business in a pure way. The people in the cooperation can be the bridge. The cooperation him himself, we need new something like the value alliance, like something a new measurement, but we have to we have to change the rule in the corporate world to be able to really do social business. And that's why we are on the way. Uh, I think the great examples, the interest of Professor Yunus, I think it takes a year, two, three, four or more, and then we will have an impact on the legal framework between 
the uh, people who invest the money and the people who hold it in the corporate world. And I see it possible in the next two or three years, together with all the social science, to make this change happen. And Emmanuel Barbier and Danone and a lot of other top managers is working on the way how you do the balancing in the future and how you do the reporting and the whole way to make it possible. But it's a way to go. And I'm very optimistic in this way we will do it. I'm very clear and have a clear objective and a realistic view at the moment. The 30 tax companies in Germany, the 30 CFO in Germany at the tax will say, sorry, this is not my role. My role is to fulfill my expectations through the stakeholder and to the shareholder. And the stakeholder philosophy and the shareholder philosophy is still arising questions where we have and where we see who is um, the guiding line at the end. So I love the corporate world because I love the people inside and the people are the bridge. The systems have always a clash. Um, absolutely. But the clashes may be good. The, the clash could be good if you find good pragmatic solutions then for all this, yeah. right? Behind this conflict could be many good solutions, but there is a conflict. There's a conflict of interest, of selflessness and corporate world. Yeah, and, and as you said before, coming back to the paradox, being aware of the paradox can help you then to find these solutions. So you know, oh, there's something wrong. You know, it clashes with social business. Then you see, oh, that's a paradox. Let's think about this. I mean, this is something that we want to think That's what we did so far. That's also what we did with, uh, with the Yunus uh, uh, Social Business, where, where Daniel Novak did it with the uh, uh, MIN Accelerator program. We saw it, it was held by people. Rentschler is gone. The CEO is gone. Now it's gone. So, but it works to see, oh, there is still something uh, who is a an, 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 an conflict. And I, that's where I'm really happy because Professor Yunus never ever forgets this, you know. There is, if you're a billion uh, company like Apple, we don't run behind it, you know. You want to do it, we teach you, but then it has to be separate. It can't be inside Apple. Yeah, for sure. Apple always will go for the maximum. And, and maybe one thing to add on, because you mentioned now the example with MAN, and there are other ones where we had some experiences that maybe didn't work yet, but sometimes it just takes longer. So it might take another five years, 10 years until it grows the company and then the company picks it up again. I think this is also something that we see happening that maybe yeah. time was too early for some companies. They were not there yet. Maybe in five years, they will be ready. I think this is also Absolutely. something. And see how you start in 2010 and 2008, 9, 10, 11, every year when we was at the One Young World, every year when we inspire the young generation. Now suddenly the, the manager or the management who are 35 to 40 years, they know us. They know us in over 15 years or 10 years. They are really, they are fans and admire us. And they say, yes, this is the right track. So they will grow from inside inside the cooperation and make it happen in the way as it should happen and it's not a lousy copy of an original. And this is where we have to be very carefully because look to the German corporate world, the uh, 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 cooperative world, to the Raiffeisen world. It was replicated as cooperative all over the world, but in the mind, mon, my, most countries it was lousy cooperated, really lousy incorporated and it becomes a tool of corruption completely far away of this is what Mr. Raiffeisen do. The same uh, uh, danger as we saw of one or the others in microfinance. And I believe the best power still in social business will be microfinance 2.0 post uh, 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 COVID-19. So if we see to take an original as a good original, accept it, the seven principles are clear. It works, it works everywhere. It doesn't matter it's rich or it's poor. You have a problem, you follow the path, you will find the solution. But if you follow the old path in the corporate world, what ends up always in a quarter report, in the, you know all the behavior, what they have to deliver, you can't reach new aims. No, we have to leave the old streets to discover new solutions country. Absolutely. And I mean, one thing that you mentioned with the younger generation now coming into more responsible leadership roles, this is also where the YSBC network plays an important role. Having social business now in the university, educating the next generation of business leaders and leaders in general, 
with social business principles, I think will also tremendously in the long run help us to set up corporates in a different way. Mindset with this experience to get into the organizations. Absolutely. And I think the first and best place to take over one of these big companies. You know, that's what we should think. Uh, to them morning, coming back on the Green Tech Africa, to say, hey, we should not go now to the big NG or E.ON or other companies to say how we can do it in Africa. Why we are not going as an independent social business and get a billion dollar done and invest it and make it happen. We are old and grown up enough to make it happen. And I come back to the example of what I told before, you know, if once the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the unicorn, if you see it, if they would go like a unicorn like Google, if they would go to IBM, there would be no Google. They would suck in in the IBM. There would be not the Google. The same is for us sometimes. I think we are, we are old enough entrepreneurs in social business. We have our desire. We have our compassion. We have our mindfulness. We know what we want to solve. Let's be business people enough to say, let's go for the billion dollar companies and for the zebras, as you, as you call it. I think it's enough. Let's create this by our own and keep our strengths together. And our strength is to work selflessness. We know what's enough. We doesn't have to earn uh, 3 million euros as a manager or 5 million or 10 million. We want to feed our families. That's enough. So we know what's enough. That's again the call to action for everybody out there listening to us now. When we finish our lecture series, you have to start building that $1 billion social business unicorns. Maybe Hans, coming back to the three pillars, we said number one is like creating social businesses. Number two yeah. is talent. And number three would be everything about partnering, maybe procurement. I think this is where we have tremendous opportunities and we see some examples right now. Maybe you share a bit of your experience. Yeah. There. How can corporates I work with social businesses? Yeah, that's what I like more because working on the same level. So, for example, uh, if SAP announced now five percent of all the, in, uh, the of all the uh, the procurement will be done for social business or for handicapped uh, 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 people, that's the beginning. I want to be a business partner of them, a respected business partner of them. I can supply them. I can be the market. I can, you know, but control for the business what I want to do. Mm -hmm. as the same level. And we see now more and more uh, uh, corporates comes in and plays this role. What, what, what we have to be careful is that they don't use us again as a greenwashing, social washing, uh, purpose washing, however you call it. Uh, but of course, we, as a business partner, we can do along to each other and we can work together and we can do something together. We are not against them. We are not somebody like from attack or somebody saying, hey, we have to close it. We just want to have independent business, always. The social business is always an independent institution, independent management, independent cash flow, and a clear aim to solve a problem. Um, and uh, we see now um, uh, many good examples. Uh, nearly every company who I know is open to talk with us. What we can do for each other, that's what we listen. Uh, and then we should see what we want to do to each other. Some of the opportunities, it's a doable way for both of us. Some doesn't work. Some doesn't work for us, some doesn't work for them. But there is a good opportunity in procurement and there's a good opportunity in making business together. Totally. And there's a question from Lamina. Thanks, uh, Lamina, from the Unicenter Center, putting an important question here with the ongoing pandemic that is happening all around the globe and affecting everyone around the world. Will this affect how corporations work, becoming more socially conscious and then embrace social business? Do you think this is, let's, let's say, at least a positive outcome out of this pandemic? More companies will go into social business direction or will it be rather even the opposite because they have, been, they have to focus on their core business first? I would more rather call it any good on this pandemic because there's nothing good if we have, for example, cholera or tuberculosis or anything of this uh, unnecessary, awful, harmful uh, infections, uh, what, we are, uh, what we are knowing. It's a very painful uh, lecture what we do at the moment. It's extremely painful. The most of the people who suffer, they are very 
they are not loud, they are, they are silent, they are dying silence at the moment, out of fear, out of opportunity. I see a dramatic wake-up call about the way, what's necessary every day, what's important to me, what's important to my family. So it's more or less the greedy and the artificial behavior to have a nice handbag with thousand dollars. It helps me to have a self-competence in the life. That's changed. That's over. Mainly of the people know this doesn't help. Really caring. To come back on, on, on Lamia's questions, really a, a human. Humanity can be in the center of many people because it's a wake-up call and it's a dramatic wake-up call. So in this way, I believe more people coming back. I don't believe that corporate can learn, but people can learn and people can make the difference. So since over 26 years, I'm working now with the corporations and what I can, as a conclusion of my observance, it's my, I don't know if I'm right, is... It's not that the people can learn. It's not the corporate can learn. The people can learn. And the people makes a difference. And then they can change the corporate or they can change uh, the politics or they can change a community or a sports club or a hospital or the family. But as more we as people let it be that we are human, we are here to take care about each other, as more we can change not only the corporate world, also the family world, the street, the neighborhood, our small family businesses, our sports clubs, our behaviors, and everything else what we make to create a community. And, and maybe here just to add on, I mean, the corporates right now, first, they are in crisis mode. So they have to fulfill their obligations, make sure that they survive. The people will hopefully provide medium and long-term change. So that's something, Hans, that we also learned today. Some of the things take a little bit longer. So we're looking at the next five, the next 10 years, also 2030. This is where the sustainable development goals we want to have achieved. Where do you see social business in 2030? In the corporate world, I hope to remember the real truth of corporates. If we looking back to our history, if we want to shape the future, we have to understand the past. If you look to the beginning of the corporate world, it was people who worked together to overcome the biggest stress, and this was energy and the coal in Germany, to overcome for the next 30 years how to invest and share the loss, not the profit. In the beginning, it was all like a trust, like a big club, where hundreds of thousands of people come together to build something who can turn it around and share the loss and not making the profit. And um, in this way, uh, I think we can inspire with the power of social business, the economic system, to share it all over the world. And by 2030, we see a lot of unicorns out there, the, the big, big social businesses that will inspire many others. We are here and just commitment to Professor Yunus from the Grameen Creative Lab and the people around me with Yunus Sports Hub and Yunus Environment Hub in the next five years. We want to help, we want to have everything done to see we have five new zebras out as a social business. Hopefully, two will be again new microfinance because this is now very important. And of course, to everything what Professor Yunus um, helping us to understand about the micro uh, economic system, the informal market, then it doesn't exist anymore. Thanks to Professor Yunus and thanks to social business. There is nothing anymore like an informal market. There is a micro market. There is a corporate market. We're working all in the economic system and we respect each other on the same level and not dominant one each other. And at the moment, the domination is very clear. So Hans, there were great final words. We're coming to an end. We will see two zebras coming up in the next year. So I'll keep track of that. And I'd like to say thanks to you, Hans. Thanks to Professor Yunus and the Yunus Center team for inviting us. Thanks to all of you. And I would hand over to Zinat now for the closing remarks. Zinat, over to you. Thank you very much. This was a great conversation. I think the topic was approached from a very realistic point of view. And with the examples, I think it really helped to relate. Uh, so thank you very much, Liu and Hans. 
To our audience member, uh, thank you for joining. Um, as you know, the topic today was why and how uh, corporates get involved with social businesses. So if you, your company, the company you work for are interested in social business, feel free to connect to us. If you have questions for the moderator, for the speaker, please do send us. Our email address is ysbc at unocenter.org. So we, we see there's a lot of comments in our chat box. And of course, if you email us, we will We'll respond to you. We will convey these to our speaker and moderator. So do send us any questions or comments, feedbacks you have. And um, now we would like to take a group screenshot of all of you. And we would now request everyone to please turn on your cameras so we can take a group photo. So this will take about 15, 20 seconds. Uh, so please turn on your cameras and smile big so we can get a beautiful photo of all of you joining. Just a few more seconds and we should be done. Yes. Thank you very much again. Thank you for joining us uh, in this session and to all of those who keep coming back and watching our sessions. We have many more exciting sessions coming up uh, every the first Monday and the last Monday of each month. So please do join our all our uh, web lecture series. Uh, we'll now show a slideshow of all the inf uh, inf containing information of uh, the upcoming sessions, uh, which will have information how, how to register and where you can watch our sessions sessions. Uh, if you have missed our past sessions and want to watch it, th those would be on our social media pages. Our YouTube channels will also have video recordings of the past sessions. And you can, of course, always go back to the Social Businesspedia and the YSBC Facebook page, the Unicenter Facebook page for information about the upcoming session. So I would kindly request the tech team to play the slideshow on our upcoming sessions. Thank you very much again for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again in our upcoming sessions. Thank you again and bye-bye.